Hello there, my name's Gary Simmons from Andor Authority. Now, whether it's because we've got clumsy fingers or we weren't paying attention, we've probably all deleted a photo from our phone that we didn't mean to delete. Now, assuming you don't have a backup, the question is, is it possible to recover that photo from your phone storage? Well, the answer is no. Well, actually, yes. Well, maybe. Let me explain. So the way it works is this, you take a photo with your camera app, it produces a JPEG file and that needs to be stored somewhere either on the internal storage or on the external SD card depending on your camera app and depending on how you've got it set up. Now when an operating system wants to store a file onto storage, it needs to organize that storage so that it knows where one file begins, where another file ends, what the names of the files are, if there's a hierarchy, directory structure, and so on. Now that is called a file system. That system of organizing storage is a file system. Now on Android, you're bound to come across about four different types of file systems, so four different ways of organizing files onto the media. Now, of course, Android uses Linux and the most popular file system for Linux is ext4. So the majority of Android phones use ext4 for their internal storage. But there's also a file system used by Linux called the F2FS. F2 is 2F, so it's FFFS, so that's the flash-friendly file system. F2FS, that was developed by Samsung, which is a file system which takes into account some of the special characteristics of flash memory. Now, if you're using a external micro SD card, that could either be formatted using FAT32 or using XFAT, depending on its size. So we've got EXT4, F2FS, uh, FAT32, and XFAT. Now, when a file is deleted on each of these four different file systems, what actually happens is different because the way they're organized, the way they're structured is different. But in general, broad strokes, what happens is that the space that was being occupied by the file is just marked now as free space. So the data isn't obliterated, it's not actually removed. All that happens is that where the file was before, it now says this is free space. This means that if you want to recover a deleted file, you have to have some tools that understand ext4, f2fs, xfat and fat32 and know to search through the free space to find files that were previously in existence but have now been marked as deleted. So starting with the internal storage, this will be uh, ext4 or f2fs, there are two basic ways that you can access these undeleted files, and that is using an app that you install on your phone. And if you go over to the article that accompanies this uh, video, then I've listed some of the apps that might work to do that. Or you use something like a Windows program and you connect your uh, phone to it via USB. Now, in both cases, you're going to need root access. Now, why is that? Well, basically, the file system is a very important part of the operating system. Its integrity is essential. And really, you don't want just any program mucking about with the low-level stuff of a file system because that could delete, resolve in file deletion, it can re result in corruption, all your data could be lost. It's also a security nightmare because once an app has access to the low-level file system, it can start reading data from anywhere it likes. So it can start reading data from your banking app and read your passwords, and it can do all kinds of things that you don't want an app to do. So whether it's a malicious app or a badly written app, an app having access to the low-level file system is definitely a no-no, and that's what we want, and that's a good thing. Except for in this case when we want to do file uh, undeletion, and that's because we need access to the low-level file system to find those files that are now residing in free space that used to be the photos that we wanted. That means if you use these apps or you use these Windows programs, you're going to need root access. So you have to ask yourself the question, how important is this photo that I've lost? Is it so important that it's worth risking rooting my phone and then trying to find it? Or is it just, it was a nice have, but okay, I've lost it. Now that's your decision and you have to weigh that up carefully. But remember, there are no guarantees because it's searching through free space to try and find a file that was once uh, your photo. And if even the act of rooting itself could actually cause other files to be written to the file system, which could in fact overwrite that file because it's now considered free space and the operating system just writes over it. So there is a, there's a risk here and you have to weigh up the balances. 
Now, if you save your photos to an SD card, then things are slightly different because XFAT and FAT32 are relatively simple file systems, and you can easily take the micro SD card out of your phone and plug it into a card reader, and then on Windows or on Mac OS, there are lots of programs available. Again, I've linked some in the article that goes with this uh, video that are able to recover photos from SD cards. And they're not only for Android, you also find those programs work for digital cameras and for other media that you might have stored on an SD card. Now, I've used some of these programs for an SD card, and I've been able to get over 90% of the photos that were on an SD card recovered. So there is uh, some success here. But again, remember, it's just searching through the free space trying to find things that it thinks might be a photo or thinks might be a file that was previously deleted. Of course, at this point, it's also worth mentioning really you should back up your photos. Now, there are two ways to back up your photos. One is you should regularly copy over USB cable the photos from your phone onto your computer, onto a laptop, and then from there you should make sure they're backed up maybe on DVD or CD or on a flash disk, but somewhere so you have a secondary copy. Or alternatively, use a cloud backup service, for example, like Google Photos. And the idea here is that every time you take a photo at the right moment, maybe when you're connected to Wi-Fi or when you're charging, the program will upload those photos to the cloud so you always have a copy of them there. Now, of course, there are security implications to this as well. I don't live in the US, but probably all my photos are residing somewhere in a server in the USA, so that could be a concern. There's also the problem of if the servers get hacked, then all of my photos become uh, available for everybody to see. So there are some concerns, but personally, I use Google Photos. I've been using it for years, and it's a good way to make sure you have a backup of all of your photos. Of course, it also offers you the ability to delete photos from your device. There's a clean up free space option on Google Photos that deletes the file photos that are already in the cloud so that you don't have to, you can free up space on your disk, you don't have to worry about having a backup of them. Now, if you don't like Google Photos, there are plenty of other alternatives. There's Dropbox, there's Flickr, there's Microsoft OneDrive, there's actually loads of them. You just have to choose the service that offers you the best uh, price, offers you the best uh, features, and the one, the company that you trust the most. So to recap, there are four different types of file system, ext4 for internal storage, uh, F2FS for internal storage, XFAT and FAT32 for external storage, depending on where your photo is saved, depending on what, how easy it is to recover the files. If it's on internal storage, you're gonna need root access. If it's on the micro SD card, then you can just take it out and put it into a program under Windows or Mac OS, try to recover the photos from there. But you should be backing up your photos. That's the key takeaway from all of this. Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Hit that bell symbol so you get a notification every time we release a new video. And last but not least, please do go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.